Good evening, Lake Erie Council. My name is Jared Blundy, and I am the camp director out of Fire Island Scout Reservation. And I am here with my, one of my great friends and special guest today, Mr. Anthony. How are you doing, Anthony? Good, Jared. How are you? Glad to be Hi. back with you. I'm doing great. It's been a little while since we've done a den meeting together. It has. How do you feel about uh, being the guest instead of the producer on this one? Well, you know, Jared, it's, it, I, I keep looking at my second monitor, and I keep well, like wanting to see what's happening on Facebook, and so it's weird. It's weird that you're producing and I'm not, so I'm glad to be here. Great. Well, uh, for those who are joining us on Facebook for today's den meeting, it's for Weeblos and Arrow of Light Scouts. We're doing the Aware and Care uh, adventure today, and I'm pretty excited about these fun activities we're going to get to do and learn a little bit about folks that live with disabilities and uh, how they live about their lives, how we can learn to understand a little bit better and uh, know that we all care for one another in this world. Absolutely, especially during these difficult times, Jared. Absolutely. Now is the, the best time to get to know one another and, and reach out to folks to make sure that uh, everybody's doing okay. It has. How do you feel about uh, being... There we go. All right. So as uh, our scouts are joining us today, I'm going to do a little bit of sharing here. Uh, I'm going to put up this uh, little resource that we have from our den leader guide. And uh, what we'd like you guys to do is to come up as, with as many words based off of the letters on this worksheet as you can. And Anthony and I are going to be working on it ourselves, but you can comment with uh, your words that you make and we'll share it all together here at the end. And uh, as you're doing that, we'd also like to hear about where you're from. So just tell us your first name and uh, your, uh, your pack that you're with. And we'd love to get to know everybody that's joining us today. So you'll see that come up in, on your screen in just a second here. Anthony, can you see it? I can see it, Jared. All right, let's hear. What, what kind of words can you see made out of an A, A, R, W, E, and C? We. We, okay. What do you see, Jared? I see car. So, so far we have car and we. We have car and we, yes. Uh, can you pull that spreadsheet back up there, Jared? I sure can. Let me show Share that with our friends. I thank you. And there we are. And so make I sure can you're see... following along with us, just so um, so that way, we, in case Jared and I miss a word, you guys can catch up with us. Please, or, yes. Uh, help us, and help us out. So make sure you guys are following along right here on this worksheet. Produce. <laughs> All right. What, what, other, uh, letter, what other words do you see here? Yeah. I see R, Jared. R, A, R, E. Got it. Yep. Mm, what else? I see, um, I see care. Hey, look at you. Four-letter word. A lot of word. Now, I see a very negative word. What's that one? War. War. Ooh, you're right. Not a big fan of that word. No, but it's still a word. Mm -hmm. All right, well, all our uh, friends are joining again. If you want to uh, send us your name and your pack number, and again, any other words that you see here in our word scramble, we're going to get started with our den meeting opening here in a second and then share some of the things that we uh, share from some of our live viewers. So Anthony, behind me here, I've got the, uh, the American flag. Would you join us or join me in the Pledge of Allegiance? Absolutely. All right. So if you're in uniform, you can show your scout sign and a salute. Otherwise, with your hand over your heart. And uh, let's begin with, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America and to and the Republic, Republic for which it stands, one nation, indivisible, but liberty, liberty and justice for all. All right, I know you haven't been a Cub Scout for quite a while, Anthony, but you remember the Cub Scout sign? It's just two fingers, right, Jared? It is two fingers, and where does it go? Way up in the air. Way up in the air. Fantastic. Can you lead us in the scout law? Sure. A scout is trustworthy, right. loyal, loyal, helpful, loyal. friendly, friendly, courteous, kind, kind. obedient, cheerful, cheerful, thrifty, 
Brave, Brave. Clean, clean, and, and run. run. Two. All right, you might have noticed that we uh, haven't done the Scout Oath yet, and that's because we have a special thing planned for today. We're going to learn how to do the Scout Oath in sign language. Now, Anthony, a few weeks ago, as we started our Scouting at Home, I think you learned the Scout Oath in the law in Spanish along with English. Oh, I, Jared, I don't know if I've actually learned it, but I attempted to learn it in Spanish. <laughs> well, that's why I thought you would be the perfect guest for today's uh, den meeting because we're going to learn the Scout Oath in American Sign Language so you can add an extra language to your repertoire. Oh, oh, Jared, I am just the, luckily, the luckiest scout around because let me tell you, I don't learn new language as well. <laughs> <laughs> well this is going to be new for me too. Uh, a couple weeks ago in our Tiger Den meeting, I learned how to sign my name. I saw that. I was, yeah, I was watching you and Abby were both doing that, wasn't it? Yes. Yes. I think, I think that's right. I think that's pretty close. Uh, and I think we learned one of the scout, the points of the scout law, but today we're going to learn the entire scout oath. And let me tell you, we, Jared and I uh, were practicing before the show, and we run through that. So it's going to be a good time. <laughs> yeah, so let me pull up our video here. It might be a little laggy, laggy for you folks at home. So we put the direct link to this YouTube video in the video description. Oh, so okay. you can check that out either along with us here or afterwards. You can check that out and keep practicing. But we're going to try and learn this together. We're going to go kind of fast the first time, and then we'll yeah. slow it down. And then we'll do it once more. I can't wait. Uh, I'm going to I'm press one more button here so you guys can hear the audio. Because you're going to want that. Here we go. Share computer audio. Boy Scout Oath. All right. Looks like we do have five or six viewers uh, watching live with us. We'd love to hear from you guys on uh, those things that you saw in the word scramble, but also where you're from. And uh, we will review that right after we finish our opening here. All right, Anthony, you ready? I am ready, Jared. All right, we're going to try and sign this along while we're watching it. Here we go. I apologize because I will not be. The Boy Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. The Boy Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God in my country and to obey Scout law to help other people at all times to keep myself physically strong mentally awake and morally straight That was rough, that? Jared, on my end. <laughs> That's okay. We're all just doing our best here. That's the Cub Scout motto. Absolutely. Let's welcome Christy from Pack 297 who's online currently watching us. Welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Down in Independence there. Now, a question I have for you and for our folks from Pack 297 uh, why do you think we're learning about the, uh, the sign language today? Why is that important? Because it's something that I think our scouts should should be aware of because you never know who you're going to come into contact with. Maybe maybe that's their way of communicating. And so when we're caring, we have to care about people who sign as well. Absolutely. And what I thought was really cool is uh, that she was signing and saying at the same time. It wasn't one or the other. So it's very it's inclusive very of people who can hear and speak, but then also people who communicate with their hands and with their eyes. Absolutely, Jared. Absolutely. Looks like uh, Lucas from PAC 3193 is also joining us. Welcome, hey, Lucas. Lucas. Thanks for being here. All right. Let's do this one more time. So I think with just a little bit more practice, it'll become a little bit more fluid, and maybe we can start associating those motions with the actual words. How about that? Oh, if you say so, Jared. <laughs> All right. Let's do it one more time. And uh, our scouts at home, 
again, if it's a little laggy, you can watch via the direct YouTube link. Uh, but we hope that you are practicing along with us. Here we go. The Boy Scout Oath. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to God and my country and to obey the Scout law to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. The Boy Scout Oath. I think the one that, that I got uh, the most was uh, keep physically myself. strong. Yeah, you got that? Cause that yep. Like showing and the world. I got world. You're just like rubbing your elbow there. Very good. Yeah. And th that last one at the end, uh, uh, morally straight, so morally straight. And see, I, I I was watching the lagging the lagging video here, so I struggled a little bit keeping up. But I kept trying to watch you in the out of the corner of my eye, and I was like, all right, what's Jared doing? So always <laughs> good to have a buddy when trying to learn this stuff, so you can uh, you can bounce uh, bounce your sign language off each other. Absolutely. So this, that is definitely challenging, uh, but I encourage everybody to keep practicing that. And then when you come uh, back to your den meetings after all of our stay at home stuff, maybe you can impress your uh, fellow scouts with being able to say the scout oath, not just with your words, but also with your hands. I've, you know what? Absolutely. All right. There well, I would say let's, uh, let's finish our opening here by uh, reviewing the words that we found from our word scramble here. And uh, okay. we got five words. We got we, car, are, care, and war. And I like that those last two were kind of like opposites. We pulled uh, two ends of the spectrum out of, out of uh, the letters. All right, so Anthony, what are we learning about today besides just about being aware and caring in general? Jared, you're asking me trick questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, we're learning about uh, how other people could possibly um, have some challenges in their lives and how, um, how a lot of us take what we can do for granted when others can. Yeah, there's tons of uh, different types of abilities and disabilities in the world. Uh, I might be uh, uh, good at playing piano or something. I'm not very good, but I might be good at playing piano or something, or you might be really good at uh, what is something you're really good at. Is something I'm really good at. I'm really good at making conversation with people. That's I think one of one of my biggest things. I love talking with people. I know that's that's a little different, and it's maybe not like playing the piano. But I mean, I could work on cars and I can do a lot of other things. But I think one of the big biggest things with me is is I love to communicate and, and talk with others. Sure. So that's something that that you would that you think of as one of your abilities. And throughout the world, there's lots of people who have different levels of abilities and some people who have disabilities uh, that might affect their senses like sight or hearing or uh, dexterity with their hands or mobility. And we wanna just understand those uh, types of challenges that people face. But we also wanna recognize that uh, if we exclude people that have those types of disabilities, that can be really hurtful for, uh, for lots of people. And Jerry, and we, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm done. <laughs> and, and just and just and just a reminder. I mean, sometimes it's not always physical. Um, sure. Some people can, you know, it, it could be a learning disability or you know, some some certain things like that. I mean, I'm dyslexic, so mm -hmm. you can't tell it by looking at me. But you know, I I learn a little different differently than everybody else. So that's you know, that's always you, you always got to be aware of you know, not every disability looks like looks like you know everybody else's disability. Yeah, yeah. There's a spectrum for sure. Correct. And we also recognize that people who have those types of challenges are not helpless and, and, you know, often give back to our communities just like the rest of us do, uh, because we're all, we're all just trying to add to our community and, and be good people. Absolutely. As we remember, a scout is kind, a scout is friendly, right? And helpful. For sure. Yes. So to learn a little bit about uh, some disabilities and impairments that, that some people face, uh, we have a couple activities that we can do here uh, in our homes and also that our scouts uh, joining us today live can participate along with. And in our video description, there's a list of materials that you can gather up to kind of follow along with our activities today. So if you take a look at that and listen along as we get started with this first one, this one's called Don't Drop Humpty. And uh, oh, this boy. one's for me. <laughs> All right, Jared, I can't wait. Now, what is Don't Drop Humpty? 
Well, if you look in my background here, you will find that I have a couple bowls. And in these bowls, I have some hard boiled eggs. Jared, now, did you hard boil the eggs just for this, uh, just for this demonstration? I sure did, but they will go to good use for breakfast tomorrow. There you go. And my challenge is going to be to move these eggs from these bowls over here to the bowls on the piano using just the spoon. Now, Jared, doesn't that seem a little easy? It does seem a little bit easy. I could probably just scoop it up and walk it over here and place it down and it wouldn't be too hard. So in order to learn a little bit about what it might be like to live with a visual impairment, I'm going to put on my sunglasses here, which have been smeared Whoa. with hand lotion. So okay. I do not see a thing, although they do smell delightful. <laughs> Man, Mrs. Jordan, Jordan Moore Blundy is going to be watching this, uh, Jared, and your wife's going to be like, why are you using my, my hand lotion on your sunglasses? You, you might be right. <laughs> Anthony, what, what you can do to help me uh, with this activity is to time me how long it would take me to move the eggs from these two bowls to those, those two bowls over there, first without the glasses on. Okay. And then second, we'll see how that changes uh, with the glasses on, and then we'll talk about some of the challenges that I face. All right, I got my stopwatch up and ready. All right, you ready? All right, Jared, you ready to go? Yeah, give me a countdown. All right, three, two, one, you're off, Jared. Ooh, I picked it up kind of sideways, so it's long long. Right. All right, one egg down. One egg down. It took you about nine seconds, Jared. Okay, scooping up very carefully. Even though it's hard boiled, I don't want to ruin my breakfast for tomorrow by dropping it. And down. And done. 21 seconds, Jared. All right. So something I'm thinking about is I was using my eyes for sure to kind of watch the wobbliness on the, the egg to make sure it wasn't falling and react to it. So now I'm going to have to think about how I'll do that without being able to see it. Okay. All right. I've got my spoon. I got there my glasses on. All right. You're ready to go? I can hardly see the thing. I ain't ready. Give me another All right. Here we go. And in three, two, one. You're off, Jared. Hard to find the egg. Oh, got it. I think it's on the spoon here. Ooh, now I'm very aware that I didn't look at the crown before to see if there was anything in my way. Hopefully, you know, your cat or your dog don't show up there, Jared. The cat is in here, so hopefully he is not making an appearance. <laughs> All right, I got one egg down. One egg down. Jared, you're already at 24 seconds. Oh, boy. Um, okay, where is the piano? Here it is. I found the piano. There's a second bowl. Oh, that is the extra one with the egg. Oh, this one does not feel very stable. All right, right, Jared, you're you're at least somewhat going the right direction. All right, I feel like I'm just about right. I'm gonna try and sit down. There's a bowl. All right, there's definitely an egg in each. Spoon down. What's my time? Fifty-four seconds, Jared. Fifty-four. You rippled your time. Wow. No, that's, that's, that's amazing. See, 54 seconds. All right. Well, I'd love to hear from our scouts at home and some things that you were thinking about as I was doing that activity and some challenges you think I might have faced. And I'll kind of talk about what I was going through in the moment. So uh, I could definitely uh, see uh, about uh, the ground, being aware of what's around me before my my vision was impaired and knowing that everything would be in the right place i think would be really important to me mm -hmm. and having those dog that cat and dog jared you never know what could be in your way i know uh i know uh your dog likes has probably a lot of toys and bones right he does there are a few of them spread around here rather than trip over them and i'm sure the cat had probably also has the same amount of toys mm -hmm. So, you and, you know, know, visual impairments doesn't necessarily mean that, that you are uh, blind all the time or you can't see at all. It might just be that you can't see very well, either close up or far away. Uh, I know my wife, she wears glasses, and without her glasses, it's very difficult for her to see uh, most, of, most of anything. Or even, like, certain set of lights, uh, certain lighting could, could also impair your vision. I know I don't see well at night anymore, so you never know. I'm not at the glasses stage yet, but we're getting there. Yeah, so if you live with somebody that, that has an impairment like this, you can uh, care for them and be helpful by 
you know, thinking about what they might not be able to see at all times, like making sure things are put away and not on the ground and things are where you might expect them to be in case there's a time that they need to find something and you're not there, not there to help them so that they can help themselves. Absolutely. All, all right, right. Jared, what is our next activity? I have a feeling I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be asked to do something here. Uh, yes, this is your turn to uh, simulate an impairment. And this one is for mobility. All right. What I'd like you to do, <clears throat> we're going to time you again. And uh, this time we're going to do something using our scout uniform. So the scout uniform has lots of buttons and you have to button them up and uh, make sure you look all, all nice and proper before your scout meeting. Uh, but what if you didn't really have great use of your fingers? How would that change things? Okay. So we're gonna you uh, unbuttoning and buttoning your shirt back up. Okay. And then do it using a, a, a mobility impairment using some gloves a little bit later. All right. So, so Jared, am I just using my, am I just using my, my normal hands for this? Yep. Start with your normal hands and you scouts at home. You can do this right along with us. Just count or time yourself as you do this. And we'll I see. Take the shirt, so I do have, you know, a shirt underneath. So am I taking the shirt all the way off? Yeah, take the shirt off, put it back on, and button it back up. Got it. All right. You let me know when I'm ready to go, Jared. Three, two, one, go. All right. Here we go. Unbuttoning the shirt. i through that. All I've right. done shirt that. Shirt off. Yeah. Now i got to put it back on? Yep. Yep. Shirt back on. The unbuttoning is usually the easy part. Now you got to make sure that they line up. Exactly. You know... One thing that camp staff taught me, Jared, is to make sh is to how to throw a uniform on quick because I was never on time for flags. <laughs> you got to have a place that's easy to grab and get really good at exactly. putting on quick. When I was on camp staff, it wasn't here at Beaumont, but I'm good. I'm done. Top my timer. All right, you are at 35 seconds. 35 seconds. Okay. Look, I even got my buttons right. That's great. All right. So now if, uh, for say, you didn't have a great... Uh, use of your fingers, that one might change things a little bit. And we'll talk about yeah. why this might happen, whether it's an injury or uh, a disease, but uh, let, let's see how long it takes you with this impairment, which would be oh. by putting what it What do on. I need, Jared? You need some gloves, and you need something that's uh, long and straight. So it could be a popsicle stick, or it could be pencils or pens, and you need six of them. That'll be fun. I only have mechanical pencils, which are a little bigger than normal pencils, so. <laughs> okay. So I want you to put your gloves, gloves here. And I want you to put those mechanical pencils up into the first three fingers in oh, each hand. What a joy. Okay. All righty, Jared. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. There's one hand. Can't right. my fingers. Now, do I need to have both hands? You do need to have both hands. Oh. Well, this will Let's do, let's do one hand with the normal glove and then the other hand with oh, thank the Because I don't know how I was going to put the, put, put the pencils in my other hand. <laughs> All, All right. right. Let's, this is going to be good. All right. Are you All ready? Right. I'm ready. Three, two, one, go. Well, this is not going well. I can't even grab the shirt with this hand. Mm. Hold on. Oh, there we go. You got one done. That's good. There we go. I think buttoning, oh, no, oh, my pencil sliding. There we go. I want to cheat. So I'm thinking about uh, how people with different abilities really have to adapt their, their differences. And sometimes it might take them a little, little bit longer to do something, but it doesn't mean that their way is, is bad or, uh, or the- it, Wrong. I mean, or, yeah, or wrong, exactly. That's what I was looking for. Man, Jared, I'm not winning right now. Well, it's not really a win or lose sort of thing. It's just about learning. I know, but I'm, I'm learning that this is a pain. All right. Shirt is off. Shirt is oh, off. All right. All right. Now I got to pull the sleeves back out. Oh, boy. <laughs> all right. There's one. Now, hey, make sure you don't have pointy end pencils because that will really hurt your hands. Sure. So make sure you're taking safety into this as well. All right. Shirt's going back on. Oh, ain't bend those fingers. Oh, lost my pencils here. All right, here we go. I'm gonna button the shirt back up. Andrew, this is really difficult. This will be the, the interesting part. 
Man, I should have taken the eggs. <laughs> Our one button. I'm actually very impressed. It that looks quite difficult with your hands. Uh, not well, thank, it, it, thank God you you didn't realize how much you rely on your um, fingers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've always heard. I've always heard that thumbs are, are rather important, which they really are during this process here. But your fingers are also equally as important because I can't grab the buttons to put them, you know, through the buttonhole here. What is something that you could do to the shirt that, that you think might help? Not that you can do right now, but what 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 difference on your shirt that could be made to make this a little bit easier? So I'm thinking make it like the venturing shirt right mm -hmm. so um i also have a venturing shirt and those aren't buttons those are more like push buttons mm, snaps yes, there you go that's what i'm looking for snaps mm -hmm. and i got two more buttons here jared and that would make it not uh, just easier for somebody who isn't able to use their fingers very well but it would make it easier for everybody even me yeah, yeah I mean, you, i'm a big fan of the venturing uniform for that reason all right, Jared, we're done. All right, stop just shy of three minutes. Three minutes. And what was the first one, just about a minute? It was, uh, I think, about 54 seconds. Wow. So if uh, you're on camp staff and late for breakfast and need to put on your shirt quick, you might have to uh, do a little, bit, a little bit more planning. Uh, a little bit. You know, that's probably why my camp staff is so late. <laughs> So uh, tell me a little bit more about the, the challenges that you faced. You said that uh, holding on to the small fingers was difficult. How about finding the, the buttonhole? Absolutely. So with the gloves on, right, the gloves added, I mean, this may just be because I'm wearing gloves, but it added um, an extra layer to where I couldn't see what, you know, what I was buttoning. And then with, uh, with your fingers not being able to bend, mm -hmm. you basically, you had to grab it with your thumb and then you're, and then kind of use your other hand, mm -hmm. put it in the, you know, the, the buttonhole. And then you had to kind of like pull it through with just those little bit of fingers. If I had both hands with the pencils up them, I don't know if I could have done it, Jared. Yeah, make sure it doesn't slip back out too. And I it did that a couple of times, especially as you got lower, as you got lower, uh, lower down the shirt. Looks like the uh, the Snyders from Pack 297 had a great suggestion using Velcro would be another way to uh, buttoning or, or fastening your shirt a little bit easier. So I was thinking a little bit about uh, maybe if you didn't know somebody who had disability and you just uh, maybe somebody from another pack and you saw them you know kind of messing with their shirt and it was taking them a little, a little bit longer than normal, you might think that they didn't know how buttons work because it was you know it looks so difficult, but you know, you really have to think about uh, people as, as you observe them that maybe it's not because they don't know how things work, but maybe it's just because things take them a little bit longer and that's no big deal. No, because everybody's different and everybody has their own way of doing things, right, Jared? Absolutely. The way I button my shirt might be different from you. Absolutely. You never know what's, what they, uh, what everybody's life is and how they choose to live it and, and, and make their way through it, right? Yeah. And like we said before, it may not just be because of a disability, but uh, if I had maybe broke my finger while playing sports or something, I might have the same problem. Or if I grow older and my joints are a little bit more stiff, that this can happen to everybody. I know somebody like that. <laughs> All right. Are you ready for our next activity? I am ready. All right. Well, we've done requirements one and two already. Now we're working on number three. And uh, for this one, we're going to try and learn a little bit about the differences that everybody can have. We've been talking about this a little bit. And the way we're going to do this is using some kitchen uh, materials. So I think you grabbed some lemons. Is that right? Yeah, I got my lemons. A whole bunch of them there. Uh, a couple of potatoes here. And uh, what you can do at home is you can grab uh, you know, a bag of fruit. Maybe it's apples or lemons or potatoes like we have. And uh, what we like to do is just grab a couple of them. And what Anthony and I are going to do, we're going to take a second and, and really get to know uh, my starches here, or your fruit over there. And uh, after about a minute of getting to know them, we're going to introduce them to the other person here. So you can do okay. that at home, whether it's a sibling or, or a, uh, a parent. And we'd like you to come up with a name for your 
uh, your food or whatever, and give them a little bit of a story. So I'm going to think about mine here. Right. And one question I have for everybody that you can uh, comment in Facebook here as we're doing this is, do you think that all potatoes, or lemons in this case, are alike? Sorry, sorry, folks. I ate the I ate the potatoes for dinner last night, so I had lemons today. <laughs> what do you think, Anthony? Are all potatoes alike, or all lemons alike? Um, well, Jared, I I can see you know the lemons that I have over here. They are not all alike, and and potatoes are the same way. I mean, heck, there's different kinds of brands of potatoes, or you know, different kinds. Yeah, they, they look a little bit different. You know, one's a little bit more knobbly. I heard I, that you're. I got a bigger lemon and smaller lemons and. Hmm, lots of differences. Okay. All right, Jared. I got names for mine. I got names for mine too. Okay. I'm. I can't wait to hear about your your lemons. Okay. You want me to go first? Yes. Yes. All right. So um, the scouts probably don't know this because they don't know me that well, but I am a big, um, I'm kind of a nerd when it comes to like uh, news. I love news. I was a journalist for, uh, uh, in college. And so I named my lemons after two of my favorite journalists. So people on TV, right? So I named uh, this one, Nora O'Donnell. She's the anchor and managing editor of the CBS Evening News. Great female journalist. And this one, Bob Schieffer, um, a legendary newsman of CBS. Um, uh, He's still active. He retired a couple years ago, but was the anchor of Face the Nation for many years. So uh, those are who I named my lemons after, two of my idols of my life, uh, Nora and Bob. And uh, they're both based in Washington right now, and they still are uh, reporting the news and, and keeping us informed during the coronavirus. So tell me about the lemons a little bit. How are they uh, alike? How are they different? Tell okay, so, so let's start with, uh, with Bob here. Um, <laughs> so Bob is, is probably the largest lemon I have in the pack. Um, he, it's not exactly like round, it has a couple of, you know, darkened spots and kind of like wrinkly, right? Mm -hmm. Nora, on the other hand, is a smaller lemon, much smaller of a lemon, and has less wrinkles, but has a couple of, you know, like, like just spots on her. Okay. But has this little bump, where Bob doesn't have any bumps. So, those are Nora and, oh, as I throw them on my computer. Nora and Bob. All right. Well, thank you for introducing me to Nora and Bob. All right. I would like you to meet Franklin and Diane. Where did you come up with those names? They just came to me. I think they, they were imbued with these potatoes at their birth. <laughs> Franklin and Diane. I love it. Meet Bob and Nora. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Diane here, she has very smooth skin. I think that she takes very good care of herself. Maybe she goes tanning for once in a while, but always wears sunscreen. Uh, she is a, she's a little bit smaller than Franklin over here, but they're, they're relatively the same size. <clears throat> but uh, one of the biggest differences that set them apart is Franklin over here. He's got those ridges like you were talking about before, but he's also got a lot of these eyes. He oh, look at how many eyes Franklin has. Yeah, you can see one up here, one up here. This one kind of looks like a mouth, but that's actually just another eye. He loves looking at the world, so he has eyes all over the place. Man, Bob and Nora should have both of these so they can find the news. See Franklin <laughs> over there. So Franklin is too busy staring at the world to take care of his skin. That's why he has uh, some of these extra ridges, and he's a little bit more wrinkly. You know, Franklin, that is not healthy. I know. You gotta wear that sunscreen. Absolutely. All right. So you think you know uh, you think you know Nora and Bob pretty well over there? I do know Nora and Bob pretty well. All right. So what I want you to do is put them on the Franklin. Oh, I know them. I know them intimately. All right. So I'm gonna grab two extra lemons to make mine a little bit more challenging. Okay. Okay. Well, I want you to mix them up underneath your your desk there. All right. And uh, when you pull them back out, I want to know if you can identify Nora and Bob from your pack of lemons. All right. Ready to go. Are you ready? I'm ready. So I got my lemons here. I got four lemons. Now, I definitely know who Bob is. Bob is this lemon right here. Mm -hmm. He's the biggest lemon in the pack. He has, you know, the wrinkles as, as, as poor, you know, Bob does. So here's Bob Schieffer. And uh, so got his lemon here. So we're going to put him over here. Now, Nora, on the other hand, I got three lemons that are about the same size. And I know for a fact this one isn't Nora. Put that over here. 
But this one is right here because she has a little bit of discoloration here and the bumps. So I found Nora O'Donnell and Bob Schieffer, and then their other two news friends here were Scott and, and Gail. <laughs> I love it. Yes. All right. Well, I, uh, a little bit easier for me because I just have the two, but I can definitely tell them apart again because, uh, <clears throat> because Franklin over here has many eyes, doesn't keep, take as, as uh, good a care of his, his skin. And then Diane over here, uh, a world, world seeker, but she takes good care of herself. Look at that. So we know who our friends are, Bob and Nora and, and, and Franklin and Diane. <laughs> <laughs> you know, something I noticed, though, while I was watching you identify your lemons over there, okay. is that you seem to take a lot more care of them once you gave them a, a name and a backstory, right? You're Absolutely. Right I mean, they're now part of the family, you know? I don't know, I don't know if I can ever actually use these here lemons. Oh boy. <laughs> That's otherwise they'll rot in my fridge. So we will be using them here very quickly. <laughs> well, I love that we're able to find unique things about uh, kind of an every, everyday object, which means it should be very easy to find unique things about uh, the people that we're with. Absolutely. I mean, Jared, me and you are very unique people, but we have some similarities, you know? For sure. I mean, there are things that we like in common, like scouting and like being outdoors. But there are differences that we have too, that uh, we have some different hobbies and uh, have had different life experiences and lived in different places. Absolutely. We'd love to hear from our scouts about uh, some unique things that are about yourself, like your hobbies, your favorite foods, places that you go, or other fun things that you really enjoy. And uh, think about how those things that make you different also put you into a group with other people. So. You know, we found different things with our potatoes here that one had made. And lemons. <laughs> and your lemon. <laughs> but they're still potatoes. They still fall into that same group of people. They're the same, same, uh, same group of, see, I think. Last the, time I checked, J-Rod, these are not people. These are still lemons <laughs> and potatoes that are now news people. And I don't know what your backstories are with yours, but. <laughs> so we, we might look for differences intrinsically, but we should also think about how, how people are alike. And uh, even if you have a disability or maybe you learn a little more slowly or differently, you're still a person and you're still a valued member of the community. And uh, okay. there are many other things that can connect us, like being in scouting or liking a sport or- uh, Jared, me and you both share as we're both Eagle Scouts and many people in this organization hopefully will be working towards that goal so they can join the fellowship that we have and that we share. I mean, we got them several years apart and from different councils. Mm -hmm. For sure. Now, what does it mean to you when uh, maybe you meet somebody new, but they don't really get to know you very well? They just kind of make snap judgments about you. What does it mean to me? Yeah, how does it make you feel? Well, there's a better question. Um, I find it a little rude. I mean, sure, I mean, people, people, can judge and, and you know and it's not it's not a great thing to do but they you know sometimes it does happen and th they take a look at me like okay he's he's so and so so he's a scout that's mm -hmm. great scouting is a major part of my life but there's so many other parts of it too and I'm sure Jared you go through some something very similar it, it, it kind of makes you feel that they only know they they think they know you but they really don't yeah so we can all, you know, help each other out to not feel that way by getting to know each other a little bit more, asking questions and finding out other things that we have in, in common so that we can, you know, talk about those similarities and, and instead of focusing on the differences, oh, he's the scout guy. I'm not really a scout guy. You can think about the things that have in common. Oh, we like, we both like music. It might be different kinds of music, but we like uh, listening to music in our, in our rooms or something. And maybe we like to read or we like a certain type of TV show. Those are lots of things that, that can unite us. Absolutely. Well, thanks for uh, going through that with me. I know it was a little bit weird with our potatoes and our lemons, but... Uh, Let me tell you, I made some good friends here with Nora and Bob and Franklin and Diane. <laughs> well, I'm going to put uh, Diane and Franklin off to the side here as we kind of line down our den meeting here, but we do have one more activity. All right, what is it? Well, we, taught, we did the uh, Scout Oath and the Scout Law earlier, and uh, one thing that always hits me hard is that uh, there are certain parts of those that are replicated multiple times across the things that we say. And one of them is about being helpful. So we, we have our scout 
uh, oath where we help other people at all times. We have our scout law where a scout is helpful. But then we also have our motto in uh, Scouts BSA, do a good turn daily. Absolutely. So it must be really important to help other people, right? Jared, it's, it's the main, in my, in my mind, it's, it's the main thing about being a scout is to make sure we're always helping other people. Absolutely. And it might seem difficult to help other people when we are stuck at home, although that is helping everybody to just try and stop the spread of uh, this COVID virus. Absolutely. It would be helpful to our communities in other ways. And, and one way that we'd like to share with you today is, is, is to engage a community that may not you know, receive as much attention as, as others, and that's our elderly friends. So one way that we can help to spread uh, kindness and, and scout spirit from our homes is by making uh, cards for those that may live in a nursing home or a retirement community and just writing them a nice message about some thoughts that you have and, and uh, asking about their day and, and just sharing some, some love from your house to theirs. So I'm going to pull up a couple of examples here <clears throat> and I'm going to challenge all of our scouts at home to make at least one but ideally more than one of these cards to send to either a local community place or we'll share with you uh, a website that does a lot of good by kind of coordinating letters like these to go to the places that need them the most. And Jared, say, uh, say you have somebody who lives close to your house who, who practicing social distancing, of course, um, could, could just use it like just walking by and waving through the window. That's always something you can do as well, because you never know what that simple wave can do. And a smile, a good morning from six feet away, 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 and a little wave that can do a ton to brighten somebody's day. Absolutely. Oh man, look at these cards, Jared. Yeah, so here are a couple example cards, and we have a few pointers for you as you start to create these. You know, you want to uh, absolutely use large and legible print, so this is a great time to practice your handwriting. You don't have to be artistic, but just share something from your heart. Make a card that you would want to receive as, as somebody that is uh, uh, looking for a little bit of connection in the world. Uh, another thing is to you know, avoid using the date uh, exactly when you're sending it, because it might take a little while for this message to get to somebody. And, and it, you don't want to get a, a you, you don't- You don't want to get an it. old message. Yeah, you don't want to get an old, old message. So not putting the date on it can make it feel more recent, a little more relevant. Okay. Uh, you want to embrace your creativity. If you make it a little bit personal, you know, include something that's important to you uh, in your life right now. So in the example I'm going to uh, share, I'm telling, I'm, I'm going to tell uh, this friend that I'm still learning lots in Cub Scouts from home. And I've been enjoying doing that uh, while still being home. So here's another example. Hello, friend. Hope you, this finds you happy and excited about a crisp fall day. Thinking about sweaters and pants and marshmallows. Cards may be a little older, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> Might be. Uh, I hope that today you're well rested and enjoying this wonderful time of year, and uh, sharing some things that are happening from their life. Now this next one is very artistic, and I really love wow. uh, these hearts that are falling from the tree and creating new new flowers in the ground. Really, kind of brings it to life. A very nice card and you know what these simple cards Jared especially in our elderly community could 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 really make their day because you don't know who's calling them or how often they're getting to see their family friends loved ones stuff like that and so just a simple pick-me-up that's uh that's what these are great for I know um I uh, I'm very fortunate to live very close to my 92 year old grandmother she actually lives a uh, one house up Oh, great. So I, I go and I see her daily and uh, sit, yeah, social distancing, of course. Um, and last night I just took her a simple plate of dinner. Say, you know, making sure she's eating and just doing a simple check on her. And that's that what these cards are great for. Great good turn. Um, and the last, the last uh, suggestion I have for these cards is just to be kind and thoughtful. Uh, more than talking about yourself, you, you can, uh, you know, uh, share some things from you from your uh, your experiences, but you know you want to be you want to be thoughtful about how you're explaining. So this is you know hoping that people are treating them well, hoping that they're having a good day, uh, engaging the other recipients. It's not all about you, but also about the person you're sending it to as well. Cool. 
Now, if you, uh, if you have a place to send this, whether it's to your own grandparents or, or elderly friends, that's awesome. Or you might know of a great uh, nursing home or a retirement center that's nearby. If not, there's a website called Letters of Love. It's called lovefortheelderly.org. And uh, that's where we've gotten some of these examples and some of these uh, suggestions for creating your own cards. And they've got a mailing address where you can send it to them and they will send it out to places in need as well. So if you don't know a good place to send it, they're gonna help you with that. I'll share their website here. It's also in the video description, so you can find that link. Uh, but they've got great examples and our... our Nope, oh, Jared, I think we lost you. Jared? We're doing some good. Are we back? Hey, Jared, you're back. Oh, sorry about that. Yeah, I was like, where'd he go? <laughs> Well, that brings us to the end of our DEN meeting here today. And uh, let's just recap a little bit of what we learned about uh, people with different disabilities and uh, ability levels and how we can care for them, but also be aware of some challenges that they face. Absolutely. I learned about uh, uh, people with uh, visual impairments and how I want to be aware of that kind of stuff and when I uh, am either interacting with them or living with them. What are some of you learned? Uh, what I learned is not everybody has the same mobility that, that me and you have, Jared. I mean, taking the shirt on and off could be rather difficult if you don't have access to all of your fingers and, and your joints. So being able just to maybe lend a helping hand with somebody who, you know, may just need some help, whether it's walking or putting, you know, grabbing something or, you know, anything like that. You never know it's what people have to entail to uh, get through their life each and every day. Absolutely. And maybe they don't need help at all. Maybe it just takes them a little bit longer and that's going to take okay too. But that's, you still get, just be mindful of that. Yeah, be mindful and get to know them. Because Absolutely. You know, learning about the things we have in common and along with our differences is something that's very important. And just being accepting of, of everybody, no matter where they're from and, and, and what their experiences are. Absolutely. And you know what? I made, I made some two great friends today. You sure did. Uh, Gary and Nora and Franklin and... Diane. <laughs> so absolutely. So just always be aware that, you know, not, a, not each of us, we may not all look alike, but we all uh, tend to be uh, going towards the, you know, the same direction, especially here in scouting. Absolutely. We also learned about uh, American Sign Language and how to do the Scout Oath, and we're going to keep practicing that because that can be very Something I'm not good at. <laughs> Practice makes better. Absolutely. And then uh, finally, we uh, talked about how we can continue to good good turns for different communities. And uh, here's the letter that I made. I'm going to work on adding some more pictures to it, but I like the color here. It says, greetings, I hope this card finds you enjoying the warm spring weather. Now that the grass is green and the flowers are blooming, it's beautiful and happy. I hope you are happy and having a good day and remember that you are loved. I am still doing lots of Cub Scouts at home and having a good time. I'm Jared. Very nice. And Jared, tonight I'm, uh, I'm going to go visit some of the elderly here in my neighborhood, social distancing, but I'll be heading on up, especially uh, uh, to see my grandmother Bernice and to see, uh, make sure she's uh, well cared for, especially because I'm leaving for the weekend and uh, need to make sure she's A-OK -okay and good to go and ready for me to return next Monday. Well, thank you for doing that. It's what we're all here to do. Make sure we're caring for one another, uh, one another and it's got us helpful. So that's always something to remember. For sure. Now, if you did everything along with us and, and you do these activities there at home, you'll have done requirements one, two, three, and four. And then you can tell your DEN uh, leader so you can record it in your scout book. If you would like to learn a little bit more about uh, people uh, doing awesome things, even uh, with their disabilities, we have a great video from one of our local scouts. His name is Jack Wolf, who does scouting, sports, marching band, and all kinds of awesome stuff while using a wheelchair. And he put together a great video kind of explaining uh, his experiences in life. And that's been uh, linked in the video description as well. I've got to work with Jack uh, multiple times in the past. And he's just an, a stellar, outstanding guy with a positive attitude. 
And uh, we all can learn something for Jack from Jack. And that's just something that I think everybody should just take a couple of minutes and sit down and watch his video. It's very well done. And, and Jack's just one of the nicest people out there. Absolutely. We hope that you took away uh, some recognition that there are people uh, that are all different, but have, have many different challenges. But despite those challenges, they're not helpless and you know, often give back to the communities through service to others, just like a scout should. And always remembering that a scout is helpful, a scout is friendly. We have many more scouting at home activities that uh, go on throughout uh, the week. And uh, we have a whole archive of those on our website at lecbsa.org. So check that out for our upcoming DEN meeting schedule and for all of our past DEN meetings as well and more cool stuff that you do at home. Sounds like, Jared, we're going to be here at least until the end of the month, aren't we? Absolutely. So I'm looking forward to doing this again next week. Hi. I'm, and anytime you, you and Brittany want me to come back, I'll be more than willing to come and, uh, and sit here with you guys and, and try to uh, learn along with the Cub Scout Adventures here. I'm really excited. Sure thing. Thanks and thank you to uh, our scouts that hung out with us here from Pack 3193, 297, uh, the Duralik family, the Snyders, and uh, a couple more. So thanks for hanging out with us, and we're, we're happy to keep doing this. Hope everybody stays home and stays safe. And then finally, uh, just a thank to all of our Keepers of the Flame out there that, that make this possible. So if you'd like to more information on that, it's in our video description and on our website. Jared, also one quick thing, with Mother's Day quickly approaching, the council will be uh, throwing out a couple of Mother's Day gift ideas in case of the new fathers out there are uh, uh, missing school right now and need some crafts or uh, activities for your kids to do for Mother's Day coming up. Um, you can see the past videos that Brittany and I have done this week and also look uh, ahead for further details on that as well. Very good. All right, Anthony, thanks for joining me. Hope everybody stays home, stays safe, stays healthy, and we'll catch you guys next time. Sounds great. Have a great evening, everybody. Bye.